Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys had a good weekend, Sunday, etc. Enjoyed some football, <clears throat> some March Madness, stuff like that. Um, I know, you know, contests have been slow. Reddit's been slow. Um, I hope you, you guys had a good St. Patrick's weekend. For you non, or for you grinders that have been grinding, hope you guys had a good Sunday of DFS. And then hopefully uh, you guys coming back to grinding from the holiday weekend and March Madness. Um, have a good welcome back. <clears throat> so, excuse me guys. Let's go over my lineups from today. So, XFL, like I said, um, I cover XFL in my Discord. Discord link will be down below. It's, it's going to be a great day in XFL, most likely. We have a game tomorrow, but there's not going to be too much ownership in that game. So... Looking like XFL is going to be a smash once again. Like I said, I cover that in my Discord. We also do a bunch of other stuff. And then let's take a look at my NBA lineup from today. And it's a great, great day. Although, I'm really, really mad because <clears throat> the Sixers were up 17 points when Embiid usually returns for his normal rotation. And they just kept him out. They kept him out. 17-point game, kept him out. That cost me from first place. First place, didn't have him beat. Second place, didn't have him beat. Um, Josu did, but um, also Josu, good friend of mine. Um, congrats to him as well. But this second place, didn't have him beat. Fourth place, didn't have him beat. So it would have been an easy second place. Uh, Josu had me blocked, but it, it would have been a free $2,000 if... The, uh, if and B gets his normal fourth quarter rotation. So really unfortunate there, but happy with the lineup that I built today. Um, after going on that downswing, downswing for a week, we are just absolutely crushing of late. As you guys saw, XFL, and then the other day, absolutely destroyed that NBA slate. So it's been a good week. It's been a great week. Um, the core that I had for today was Tyrese Maxey, Smash, D'Anthony Melton, Smash, Kyle Kuzma was a core play for me as well. He smashed, and then uh, Joel Embiid was a core play. He would have smashed if the game stayed close. So, <clears throat> not going to keep you guys here for a long time. I'm going to get this video quick, like five, ten minute video. Um, I'm like out of breath for some reason. I feel like it's, it's like hard to talk right now. Um, so, we're going to make this pretty, pretty quick. So Miami Detroit, it's a really, really good spot. I think all three of the main guys look pretty good to me and Butler, Bam, Harrow. Um, obviously we'll prefer if Kyle Lowry's out just because that boosts Jimmy Butler a lot. It also boosts like Gabe Vincent would be a viable value at 4-3. would feel comfortable in his minutes. Kayla Martin at 4-5. He'll play big minutes, but very low usage. Another playable value. Not a lot of value on the slate, so you're going to have to be scrounging for value somewhere. But I like the main three in a, in a really good matchup if you think this game stays close. If I had to rank them, I think I'd go... Point per dollar. I, I might like Bam the most, but... It's close. You can interchange Bam Butler, but Tyler Harrow is definitely my least favorite of the bunch. But I have interest in all three for GPPs. And then Kevin Love will play around 20 minutes. I think he's a solid value play on this slate as well. Let's move on to Detroit. So, not much here. It stands out to me in uh, terrible matchups like Ivy, Bagley, Hayes, Wiseman, Magruder. I, I feel like they're all priced about right. Maybe a little bit overpriced given the matchup. So, yeah, I, I think Detroit's going to be a stay away for me on this slate. Let's move on to the Pelicans. So, really good spot here. I mean, I know I know CJ was in a smash spot last game in the same matchup, but I'm fine going right back to the well here. Houston is terrible against guards, so I really like Ingram. I really like CJ. I think they're both too cheap given this matchup and the rotation they're running. So, CJ, Ingram, both look very, very good to me. Trey Murphy seems like a safe play, but is priced about right. Jonas Valanciunas played 34 minutes in this game last game. If I knew he was going to play 34 minutes again, he would 100% be in my lineup tomorrow. But once again, his minutes all over the place. So if he's going to be like a chalky play on this slate tomorrow, I think it's a good fade just because the volatility with his minutes. But like I said, if, if he gets 34 minutes tomorrow, he's an absolute smash. So going to be an ownership thing for me there on Jonas Valanciunas. 
Herb Jones, price about right. Josh Richardson, no. Najee Marshall will play like high teens minutes. Don't think we can go there. Larry Nance, like another thing. If I knew he was going to play over 20 minutes, I would like him for value. But I played him here on this slate and he just didn't play much. So another value play that I'm kind of like iffy on just because the minutes are volatile right now with him. So, um, yeah, I, I think the main targets from the Pelicans are going to be Ingram, CJ, and then possibly Jonas, possibly uh, Larry Nance. Let's move on to Houston. So, I like the Houston guys as well. I don't think people are picking up on the fact that they're running an extremely, extremely tight rotation right now. You saw 40 minutes for Kevin Porter Jr. You saw 40 minutes for Jalen Green. You saw 36 minutes for Alfred Sengen. You saw Jabari Smith play 29 um, got into foul trouble. You saw KG Martin play 30. And then they're just running a slight, t- such a tight rotation, it's hard to go to anyone on the bench. So <clears throat> I think Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green are both good GPP plays. If I had to pick one, I probably would lean the side of Kevin Porter Jr. Sengen, if he's going to play over 30 minutes, I think it's perfectly fine. You know, not a priority for me, but a pretty safe play. Um, I really like only targeting Sengen when Kevin Porter Jr. is out because they'll run the offense through him. But with Kevin Porter Jr. back, he definitely takes a big usage hit. But, um, yeah, really like Kevin Porter Jr. I think Jalen Green's solid. I think Sengen's okay. Jabari a bit pricey for me with Sengen um, back. <clears throat> KJ Martin seems like a pretty safe play if he's going to continue to play around 30 minutes. And then, like, Tari Eason, his minutes back down on a downtrend. So, a playable value. If he, if he gets extended, he could smash. So, playable with upside. And then, like I said, they're running a, a really tight rotation right now. Um, I mean, Tate, I have no issue with it. Um, been on a hot streak of late. Um, can stuff this dot G. Probably plays, you know, around 20 minutes. Completely fine with Tate for value. I'm not going to go to anyone else. Let's move on to Toronto. So, <clears throat> God, sorry guys about the cough. So, Siakam finally out of his slump. Is he back? I mean, I don't like the matchup, but, I mean, if he's back to his old ways, he is too cheap. But, who knows? We'll see what ownership comes in. I think he's playable. I will say, people see players going up against Milwaukee and they get scared. They get scared. Milwaukee has been actually very, very bad against opposing point guards. So, I think Fred Van Fleet's a pretty good GPP play at this price tag with how Milwaukee's been bad against opposing guards. Scotty Barnes, just there for me. He seems like a safe play. Jakob Hurdle, hate the matchup. Would feel better about it if Brook Lopez is out. Um, so not not a ton of interest in Jakob Hurdle. OG, kind of the same with Scotty Barnes. Seems like a fine play to me. Gary Trent, I think is a solid value play. Um, don't know why his price came back down. I assume he's going to be one of the most popular plays on the slate tomorrow. I mean, for good reason. There's not a lot of value. He has upside. Um, but just know when he's not playing well, he can get its, his minutes cut and his floor is this low. So um, I usually like to fade these guys in GPPs when they're popular. But um, albeit on this slate with not a lot of value, he is definitely a solid value play. And I'll mention Chris Boucher who probably plays, you know, 15-ish minutes. Good point per minute guy. I don't hate him at all for value. I think that's decent. And I think that'll do it for me. They, they, um, pretty sure Precious was a DNP last game. Um, on the 17th, I think they had a game. 16, 18. Maybe it was the end of the game he came in. But, yeah. Not a good matchup here. But, you know, uh, Giannis, the best spend up on the slate. There, there's not a lot to spend up for right now, but. Uh, actually, I, I would disagree. I actually like Paul George more. I like I might like Dave even more. Um, but Giannis is always great play um, in any format. So, like Giannis, I think Drew's a bit pricey. I think Middleton's a bit pricey. Brooke Lopez is probable, so that's going to take Bobby Portis out of play. Joe Ingles overpriced. Um, if um, Grayson Allen is up, uh, Grayson's probable. So, that's going to... Ingles, content. I think they're priced about right now with Grayson Allen back. Like... Angles, Grace, and Content, they'll all get minutes. They're all playable values, but I would have preferred to go to them if Grace and Allen is out. So, not a lot to like here on Milwaukee outside of Giannis at the top for me. Let's move on to the Clippers. So, let's take a look at the Clippers rotation today without Kawhi Leonard. So, they played Westbrook huge minutes. They played Morris huge minutes. They played Gordon huge minutes. Robert Covington got into the rotation, played 23 minutes. And then Mason Pullman got the backup five. Terrence Mann got around 20 minutes. So, Paul George, I think, looks like one of the better spend-ups on the slate. 
Um, his usage without Kawhi is just absolutely insane. So I think Paul George looks very, very good. And then if they're going to play Westbrook, huge minutes. Um, I don't know if he benefited from foul trouble or something from someone. Like, did Terrence Mann get into foul trouble? No. So if they're going to play this many minutes of Russell Westbrook with no Kawhi, I, I think he's way too cheap. Um, so I, I really like the both top two guys here for the Clippers. Zubac, Plumley, they'll kind of split the center minutes. I think Zubac is safer from the bunch. Like, I think we get mid-20s minutes from him. I think 5-3 is reasonable. Mason Plumley probably plays 18 to 19 minutes. I think he's a pretty safe value play. And then I like Marcus Morris at 3-6. He's going to get a pretty big bump with no Kawhi. I expect around 30 minutes from him. Um, I think he looks like a pretty good value play on this slate as well. Um, Batum playable as well, but I'd much, much rather go to Marcus Morris. And then Robert Covington at the flat min, um, 23 minutes. I mean, I would have to look more in depth to see what happened with the rotation. I'm kind of making this video on a limb, but yeah, definitely have interest in Covington. So no Grant. So Dame, I think looks very, very good at 10, five. I think it's just too cheap without Grant. Um, when one of Simons or Grant out, I think he should be in the 11K range. So, yeah, um, I, I really like Dame. I think Simon seems like a pretty safe play to me at 6-3. Yusuf Nurkic, I mean, what are they doing here? Why, why are they trolling his minutes so hard? Kind of like Jonas Valanciunas. If I knew he'd play 30 minutes, he would be in my lineup tomorrow. But once again, there's inherent risk with him. Trenton Watford will start with no Jeremy Grant. I think he looks like a very good play at 5-1, even at this price tag. Cam Reddish, I think, is, you know, solid at 4-4. Okay option. Not going to be super productive, but okay. Thiebel, minutes kind of down last game. Um, playable, but very, very low usage. And I don't think I'll be going to anyone else on Portland. Last game here, guys. So, um, I also want to pull up the Orlando Magic rotation because I think they ran a pretty tight rotation again last game and uh, they did. They ran basically a eight man, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they ran an eight man rotation basically. So I like, I like these Magic guys in a great spot. I like Paolo. I, I, I think seven, two in a really good spot against the Lakers is solid. I like Marco Fultz, sadly, at 6.7K. Lakers just been getting torched by guards as well. So, unfortunately, I do like these Orlando Magic guys tomorrow. Wonder Carter Jr. surpassed 30 minutes today. I, I have no issue going there. I think he's kind of a pivot off, like, a possible Jonas Valanciunas, Yusuf Nurkic, etc. Franz, this guy is, like, no upside. Probably gets you 30 fantasy points. I'm okay with it. I don't even hate Cole Anthony, who probably plays, I don't know, 25 to 30 minutes. I think that's okay. Gary Harris has to hit his shots to reach value, but another value that I'm okay with at 4K. And I don't think I'll be going to anyone else on the Magic. I'm trying to think if there's anyone out. Suggs out? Yeah, he's out. Okay, good. Cool. So I think they'll run a similar rotation to what they did um, today. Let's move on to the Lakers. There's just not much here. It's just like 80 at the top for me. I think it looks good. Um, Dilo, I think, is priced about right. Austin Reeves has been playing phenomenally, but 5'8 seems right for him. Vanderbilt, not going to play a ton of minutes. So hard to go there. Dennis Schroeder takes a big usage hit with those guys back. So hard to go there. Malik Beasley's minutes kind of on a downtrend, but if he's playing well, he could get extended and does have a high ceiling. So I'm very interested in Beasley for GPPs. And then I'm not touching anyone else. Like Troy Brown, he'll play, you know, low 20s minutes. But he's a guy that needs the minutes to get there to reach value. So not too much on the Lakers for me outside of Anthony Davis and then possibly Malik Beasley. So hope this video helped you guys out. Sorry for the short video. Um, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.